In this video, we're going to talk about the full factorial experiment. In particular, when we might want to use it, what advantages it has, and also the disadvantages of doing this type of experiment. So first of all, what are, what's the alternative to doing this? So what's the traditional, perhaps, way of doing an experiment? Well, let's say that we want to grow some roses. Let's say that, you know, perhaps we're a farmer or we're a gardening enthusiast and we just want to grow a beautiful rose bush. How are we going to do that? Well, let's say that, you know, there's there's many things that we could change, but let's say that there are two particular factors or two particular variables that we're interested in. The amount of sunlight that these roses are seeing and also the amount of water that we give them. So these are relatively easy to change. We can put the roses in different levels of sunlight. We can give them different amounts of water. So let's set up an experiment. And classically, we might say, well, uh, let's start with the effect of sunlight. So say I want to study the effect of sunlight. We, what do we do? Well, we just try and vary the amount of sunlight. So let's try putting a rose bush in a low amount of sunlight and a rose bush in a high amount of sunlight. So low might be you know, partial shade or total shade, high might be out in the middle of a field getting tons of sun. But what do we do about the water in this case? Because we have to choose an amount of water to give these roses. So let's say that we give them a moderate amount of water. So what we think is not too much, not too little, but we expect, we expect it'll probably be okay. And then what we want to measure is the growth of the rose bush. So how much it grows in a given period of time. And let's say we do the experiment. And what we find is that with a low amount of sunlight, the roses grow, let's say, four centimeters in the time that we're carrying out the experiment. But in a high amount of sunlight, they only grow three centimeters. So okay, that seems reasonable. I guess we, we probably want to go with the low amount of sunlight. And maybe there's some better value in between, but if I had to pick one of those two, I'd pick the low value. So okay, that's, that's great. Let's carry out our second experiment. So we want to vary the amount of water that we give our rose bush. And so just like before, let's say we want to give them, let's try giving them a low amount of water and let's try giving them a high amount of water. And for this experiment, we're going to choose a moderate amount of sunlight. So hopefully the sunlight doesn't have too much of an effect on the, on the experiment, but you know, this seems reasonable. Let's just choose a moderate amount and see what the effect of water is. So let's say that we carry out the experiment and we're again measuring the growth of our roses in a given period of time. And let's say that we see that if we give them a low amount of water, they grow about three centimeters. But if we give them a high amount of water, they only grow two centimeters. So it looks like we want to give them a low amount of water. Okay, so if we take these two experiments together, it looks like the best growing conditions for our roses is a low amount of water or low amount of sunlight and a low amount of water. Okay, that's fine. But, but you might ask, what about, you know, the amount of sunlight or the effect of the sunlight probably depends on the amount of water that we give our rose bush. So maybe we can have too much sunlight if there's not enough water, but the maybe at, for example, a high amount of sunlight and a high amount of water might be good for the plant. And these experiments wouldn't have figured that out because here we just varied the water, here we just varied the sunlight. These are called one factor at a time or OFAT experiments. And they're sort of the traditional way that you think of doing science. You know, isolate one variable at a time, sweep it and see what effect it has. But the, so an alternative is the full factorial experiment. So you might say, well, instead of running, instead of just changing one thing at a time, let's try all possible combinations of our different variables. So let's say that on the x-axis, 
Here we have the amount of water. And again, we want to try a low amount of water and a high amount of water. And on the y-axis, now we have the amount of sunlight instead of the growth that we give our roses. And let's say we, we're going to try out a low amount of sunlight and a high amount of sunlight. And then we, do, we carry out the four different experiments. So I'm just going to draw dots here to represent that we're doing an experiment. And suppose we do the experiment, and what do we find? Well, we find that at a low amount of water and a low amount of sunlight, just like before, we get, let's say, four centimeters of growth. At a high amount of sunlight and a low amount of water, we get, let's say, two centimeters. A high amount of water, a low amount of sunlight, two centimeters. And then a high amount of both water and sunlight, we get 10 centimeters of growth. And so this is a totally different result than we got in our previous two experiments. And this tells us a totally different thing. So previously, we ran these experiments separately and we said, okay, we want a low amount of sunlight because that seems to be best when we sleep, sweep that variable by itself. And we want a low amount of water. And indeed, a low amount of water and sunlight is certainly better than independently increasing the sunlight. So in this corner, we might say our roses are burning uh, because they're getting too much sunlight, but they don't have enough water. And in this corner, our roses are drowning because they have way too much water and not enough sunlight. But in this case, they can take advantage of both the high sunlight and high water. So this is actually our best condition, but we never would have figured that out if we just had swept one variable at a time. And so this is the advantage of the full factorial experiment. It lets you capture what are called interactions between variables. In this case, this is what's called a two-factor interaction because we have two different factors, in this case water and sunlight which are interacting with each other, interaction. And so the, the other cool thing about this is we only had to do four experimental runs. So we had to grow four different rose bushes here. And in these two experiments, we also had to do four separate experiments. So one, two, three, four. But with the full factorial, we got much more information. In fact, we got much better growing conditions than we would have been able to figure out otherwise. And so this is often when we are not sure how our variables behave with respect to each other, the full factorial is often a much better design. So the upside of this experimental design is that we can measure interactions between variables and interactions are extremely common so water and sunlight is one example with plants but there's just an there's an infinite number of interactions that you might see between different variables that you're interested in studying now the downside is that if you have too many factors or too many levels um, you get what's called a factorial or combinatorial explosion so if, for example, you wanted to study three different levels and you had five different factors, this is already, what, three times three times three times three times three. Um, I can't do that in my head right now, but this is a large number of experiments, and it's just not doable. Whereas a one-factor-at-a-time experiment would give you far, few, far fewer experimental runs. But it turns out we can often be clever uh, about how we pick exactly which experiments to do so that even when we have a large number of factors or levels that we want to test, we don't need to do as many experiments as we might expect. So in this case, this is called a, if we wanted to test three vari or three levels and five factors, this is what's called a three to the five factorial experiment. This previous one that we did with sunlight and water was a two to the two factorial experiment. So the number of levels is this big number. And then the number of factors is this little, the exponent.
Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.